PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64. Both these machines come from a very awkward time in the gaming industry. The technology required to generate real-time 3D was quickly becoming more available and cheaper to produce. And the industry was trying to figure out what to do with it. Both consoles were the home to some absolutely classic titles as well as some complete crap. Though, which is the better console? They both have their merits and I really don't think there is a winner, but you click on a video saying N64 vs PS1, you want a winner, you want a deathmatch, so here you go. One of the first things I think the N64 is totally missing is a great boot-up screen. The PlayStation 1 had this epic, epic screen that came up when you turned it on. It got you so pumped up for the game. The N64 had that Mario thing, but that was, on the, that was only on the N64 disk drive, and who the fuck owns one of those? But the PS1, oh, I can't even describe it. Roll the film. We're going to cover how well each one does in terms of graphics in a later section, as this hardware bit is just about the machines themselves. The PlayStation came out in 1995 for most of us and uses a 33.8 MHz CPU, along with 2 MB of RAM and 1 MB of VRAM. Games came on 700 MB CDs. CDs were cheap and massive in capacity meaning developers could put whatever the hell they wanted into the game and never have to worry about running out of space. This led to a lot of corny full motion video, but it also is what made the PlayStation such a resounding success. The N64 came out a year later in 1996 with a significantly faster NEC processor clocked at 93.7 MHz, as well as a much faster dedicated graphics chip from Silicon Graphics known as the Reality Coprocessor clocked at 62.5 MHz, along with 4 MB of unified RAM expandable up to 8 MB with that expansion pack. The memory is also unified, meaning the GPU and CPU both have access to it, unlike the PlayStation which uses separate blocks of RAM. Games came on cartridges that could hold a maximum of 64 MB. This was one of the main reasons the N64 lost a lot of third party support to the PlayStation with its massive CD medium. The N64 is by far the more powerful machine with the ability to use demanding graphical techniques like trilinear filtering that the PlayStation just couldn't have dreamed of. While Sony's PlayStation has much more storage to play with and can serve as a great CD player, the N64's hardware is just more capable of bigger and better things. If the N64 had a CD drive, Nintendo might have had a better chance at winning the war, but their efforts to make a more powerful system were definitely successful. Another essential part of a machine built for kids is durability. The PS1 is a brick, but with its moving parts, it's fragile. The laser and motors in the CD mechanism aren't designed to be thrown around. But the N64 has no moving parts. It's a tank. I once saw my friend drop his Panasonic CRT TV on his Nintendo 64. And I was like, oh no, it's dead. And he just smiled, picked it up, plugged it in, and the N64 powered on like it was no big thing. It's one of the toughest built consoles out there. The PlayStation put up a good fight, but the N64 wins this round.
software, or games, is a really hard one. For every great Nintendo 64 game, there is a comparable PS1 game. Crash Team Racing is just as much fun as Mario Kart 64. The Spyro series gives Super Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie a run for their money. The N64's library was much smaller, but the games were usually of a better quality, while the PS1's library was huge. But most of these games occupying the library were kind of mediocre. When I used to go to parties and people were getting drunk or stoned or whatever, we'd always end up playing Nintendo 64. The vast majority of Nintendo 64 titles were relatively simple, warm, and cartoon-like. It was the only console my old girlfriend would ever play with me. She could beat me at Mario Kart every single time. N64 was just a much more social machine, and having the four built-in controller ports just meant for a lot of games that just aren't present on PlayStation. The N64's library is what made it the party system, but I have to admit, you can't find games like Gran Turismo on Nintendo 64. In Mario Kart, you find yourself choosing between Mario, Luigi, or Peach, but in Gran Turismo, you're choosing between whether you'd like your Honda to have the VTEC 1.8 engine or the naturally aspirated 1.6 engine. It's a massive difference. The problem is, this doesn't always work to the PS1's advantage, though. We look at Gran Turismo now and we say, oh my god, it's so outdated, there are so many better versions now. But we look at N64 games like Mario Kart 64 and we say, oh, that's a classic! It's a classic game! But as I said before, the, because the PlayStation 1 had that CD format, third parties gave all their great games to PS1. Just look at Castlevania, right? The PS1 got Symphony of the Night, possibly the best Castlevania game ever made. The N64 got Castlevania 64. That's the kind of game that makes you miss 2D. The PS1's library is what made it the man's console. But there are so many incredible games for each system, I'm gonna have to call this one a tie. Design. In typical Nintendo style, the N64 looks like a warm little puppy dog, while the PS1 is a piece of electrical equipment. Every button serves for a purpose and there is no nonsense anywhere on the design. If you wanted to get a console for grown-ups, you got a PS1, because they look serious. You weren't a kid anymore, pretty colours didn't matter to you. You want the man's game console that's built for man's gaming. While the N64 is light-hearted and warm, its design is more appealing to the eye, and all the revisions are so great. My personal favourites are the Pokemon Stadium Edition, Fire Orange, and of course Smoke Grey. I only own the original, but I one day plan to collect a few more other models. The console's unique designs and colours are what make them so expensive and so good to collect today. I'm going to give this one to the N64. Alright. Graphics. You'd think the N64's faster CPU, added GPU, and later release date would give it the edge, considering the PlayStation doesn't even have any discrete graphics. You might think the N64 is the clear winner with its filtered textures and graphics processor, but sadly not a whole lot of developers were very good at working with it. So a lot of N64 games turned out looking like blurry, boring messes. While with the PlayStation, most of the games look pretty consistent. To say that the PlayStation is much worse wouldn't be right, as a well-made PlayStation title from a good developer like Spyro 3, the later Crash Bandicoot games or Gran Turismo look way better than a lot of the stuff on N64. What the N64 has going for it is its ability to do a thing called bilinear and trilinear filtering. So what is that? Take a look at this comparison of the intro of Gex 3. The N64 has less pixelation on the textures, but the PlayStation looks more sharp.
In the end though, it comes down to the N64's crappy cartridge medium. Even if the N64 could handle bigger environments and better things, its small cartridges made it hard to cram the textures and the environments in, just like the PlayStation could do, meaning its powerful hardware can't be fed enough information to truly take advantage of it. If the N64 had a CD drive, this might have been a different story. Metal Gear Solid is an example of this. That game could not have been done on Nintendo 64. There were just so many graphic assets and audio clips to fit on a tiny 64 megabyte cartridge. But if you were to take a look at any of the first party titles from Nintendo, like Star Fox, Wave Race, Perfect Dark, or any of the rare games like Bad Fur Day or Banjo Tooie, it's clear that the N64 is the clear winner in the graphics department and the later edition of the RAM expansion allowed the console to run incredible looking games like Majora's Mask. The winner for graphics is the N64, by a mile. Music is a hard one. The PS1 had better quality music, by a mile. In fact, there is still a massive community of audiophiles, very audio conscious people using PS1's as CD players. I'm just gonna, if you look right now at these images on the screen, people are actually converting PS1s into full-time CD players, like they're that good at doing it, while the N64 didn't have the room for great CD audio, so it had to resort to either synthesized music or kind of compressed music. It had love but it was much more grainy. But the N64's music is certainly much more warm and jumpy. And you cannot argue with the fact that there were a lot of really talented people working on the music for the Nintendo 64. But that's not to say that there's not great music on the PlayStation 1. But I'll let you decide for yourself. nostalgia for the music on the N64, but you can't say the PS1 isn't more clear. But the thing you have to remember is that Sony has been making high-end audio appliances since, like, the CD came out in the 80s. So these guys knew exactly what they were doing when they built the PS1, while Nintendo were games people. They were about making great games, and the console audio wasn't really something that was that important. The PS1 takes the crown here with its crystal clear compact disc audio and awesome audio processing hardware from Sony. Good work. This one is difficult. At the end of the console's lifespan, PlayStation had DualShock. The DualShock design was so good, Sony used the same controller design for 16 years, only making mild updates with each release, up until the release of the DualShock 4 in 2013. But when the console came out, it used this. The N64 controller looks confusing and strange with its three prongs, handle things, but they're actually useful, with the D-pad being a must in strategy games. On the day of release, the N64 had an analog stick, something the PlayStation only got a year after in 1997. The analog stick was destined for 3D gaming, and the N64 did it first. But the N64 controller has its flaws, and the DualShock controller just flat out doesn't. 
what the N64 started, the DualShock finished. So this round goes to the PlayStation. Looking at the score, the N64 wins, but not by much. The N64 is an incredible machine that did what no other console has ever done, but the PS1 was always a great daily driver. I could just drive around the track in my Honda on the PS1, while in the N64 was a social machine, something that everyone remembers fondly from parties and gatherings. The PS1 was more of a solo machine that was built for people who were serious about games. Though, at the end of the day, the N64 and the PS1 are black and white. They're completely different things and they're both charming in their own way. But, in my opinion, the world just would not be the same without the Nintendo 64. Which do you prefer? Or do you have a story about your experience with either of the consoles? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you enjoy this kind of goofy computer content, please do like and subscribe. And of course, enjoy the rest of your evening. This game is bullshit!